I have not forgotten about this gnarly series. And that's right, this is a voiceover right now. I'm literally forcing myself to do a voiceover right now. I was so excited to do this video, this gnarly chub, that I just started and I didn't talk and I just kept going and I just enjoyed myself for a bit and I drew this crazy thing. All the excitement just closed my mouth and I got to work. I've already finished the video, I'm watching it right now, as I speak. And I am really glad I built this, because it reminded me of how much I like this more abstract stuff. You can get really detailed, you can pull a lot of details out of your brain that are super, super detailed. I need to stop saying detailed. And it ends up being like a realistic manifestation of the weird, detailed, abstract thing you had in your mind. That's way more satisfying than just referencing. That's what I'm trying to say. Abstracting super fine details out of your mind is just so much fun. It's always easy and it ends up looking just fine when you just print off a picture from anything online, you know? If you just allow yourself to be guided by the real thing, it ends up feeling like way more of a chore than whatever you just decided in your mind. And I wanted to pump so much detail into it. It just forced me to really realize that and I built this thing. That's all I'm trying to say. I think this video picks up here. I'm about to start talking. Yep, here we go. Three eighth inch eyes on this. Went in kind of deep with that. I'm not sure if they're gonna end up being glass or if I have a good match for this in a dead meat custom pair. This is a curve. This thing's not straight, but you can set a number at the same point on both sides. Put the 32 on there. Then I'm using a perpendicular line over here. Perpendicular to meet up with. There. I'm not even gonna do that in the front. There's no taper, it's all flat. Remember this? Open mouth popping, flappy popping bass. I never got it to work because resin. It Just because resin, that's why. This is essentially giving that another go, more detailed, out of wood. A one of a kind gnarly chub. Lateral line. Yeah, yeah. So that didn't, I can't remember, I think that had the bottom, but it didn't have the hook hanger. Like, it, that's a good, 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 that's
Carving on these gnarly jagged lines, it's kind of nice because mistakes just don't matter. It just makes it look better. It's the only reason I do this series. This thing is really projecting its head forward, trying to get this swoop right at the bottom. I want it to look like it's really projecting its head forward. That looks like a desperate chub. It's the kind of stuff you get on this channel. Like and subscribe. So far, plenty of detail has been achieved. I've even uh, done a little bit of sanding on those teeth. There's not gonna be much method to this, just remove material from where it needs to be removed. This thing's going to have a hole in the side of its face as well. On the front gill plate, a large section shall be missing with some brain exposed. How fun is this? It's so much extra work to think of how to make things look random and natural than to just make things not look that way. Yeah, a lot of direction changing. Not consistent at every millimeter there's a direction change. Sometimes it's straight, sometimes it's not long, sometimes it's short and then it changes, turns directions. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Random's hard, man. Just shut your brain off and move your hand. That's hard to do. At this point, I have everything carved. If you're wondering why I cut that slot right there, you probably aren't because you saw the thumbnail already, but there's gonna be a hook, a bait hook, left in this fish, and it just became a part of the fish. That's pretty gnarly, right? This is going to be a spectacular thing to catch a fish on. It's not much, but at least there's something there. That was just to give this joint more room.
for this Chubbs hook situation. It's an unfortunate situation. We're going to throw some baking soda down there. And I'm going to hold this hook like that. Get another dollop of baking soda. And just like that, this build is ridiculous. Just like that. Right on. Time to get the Dremel back out and make that look like it did before. So that's not doing it any favors when it comes to the balance of this bait. I don't think it's enough to make it so it won't work though. That's just a thin wired big pike snell hook. <laughs> A shiny new can. Giving the warm satin a try. <laughs> Giving this gnarly chub a warm satin finish. Starting with white. White's going right there because a bunch of other different colors are going to go there too, and I need a base. It's going to look like it's not healing well. Poking the bristles into the seam of what I carved. Otherwise, after it's clear coated and you didn't do that, it'd just all go away. It'd be completely pointless to carve, really. I think we're ready for clear coat. No clear coat in the slots. I was really sure to not get too much clear coat in that mouth and just pull up on any of those teeth. I no longer care to even get clear coat inside of the eye socket on these first clear coats. Like there's a little bit in there, but I don't, I didn't intentionally put it in there and I'm not making sure any is in there. I am neglecting that eye socket. It's everybody's favorite fluid. I cannot explain to you how bad this stuff smells. Maybe it's just for me, I don't know. I can barely not gag right now. We're masking this fin off too. Too much detail right there to just completely lose. This is pearl white, a very translucent layer.
Wicked gold. You like how I put the mesh over the hook? It made it so it pulled up the mesh a little bit around the wound, but I think that'll make sense, you know? Mess up the scales a little. Very simple, really. These things have a ton of like little flaky pearl white scales over color. I did go pretty hard with the gold on the top though. Looks gnarly. Okay. We need to stay off of the bone. Boy, that really just did what was necessary. Those fins are gonna look good. That's detail smoke black with reducer. So it's just an extremely thin black that only fills the lines that I scraped into that Lexan with a Dremel. Okay, time to paint some mouth flesh. Time to glue a fin in. That is a gnarly fin. <laughs> this thing is coming together. What a chub. I like that. Just a jagged little something right there. Need to figure out where to put a hook hanger now. You guys ready for some unsettling bandsaw footage? Oh man, I'm just gonna cut a notch through it so I can get a screw eye in there. I think I'm gonna cut it like that, just straight, straight. That's gonna look good with a clear coat. I found the eyes, I think. Dead, clouded, zombie. But they have brown on the outside. I kind of like that. Dead meat custom, man. Maybe gnarly chub eyes just transcend in the walleye eyes. That could be easily mistaken as a walleye used as bait <laughs> at one point in its life. <laughs> it's a rough world. What have I made? Time for clear coat. Never stirred enough, but I think I'm gonna stop.
Dude, I thoroughly enjoyed that build. I have accidentally added to the gnarly factor. There is just bug guts right by the signature right there. It's the next morning and the bug zapper is still going off. We even got a little one right there by the mouth. The garage was just full of bugs last night. There was like a hatch of something in the backyard. I could get real picky and start picking too much and screw all that up. So I'm going to leave it. I got a little bit of it off. That was a difficult line tie to clear, but it's clear. Okay. Hooks, tie it on a pole, cast it, catch a fish. That's all that's left. We're gonna go with size one aught, short shank stinger trebles. These are cool because they're flat on one side and they don't scratch up your bait as much because of that. I'm digging it. That's what I wanted. It's only 1.9 ounce. It's gonna be easy to fish for such a seven inch swim bait. First cast with the gnarly chub. It floats upright. Its head just churned a little bit. Let's give it a pop. It darted off to the side and it popped. Straight retrieve. It's not that good with a straight retrieve. Walk the dog is very easy though. This is a walk the dog bait. Yeah, if you're okay with it not having a good straight retrieve action, this has a fantastic twitching walk the dog action. If that's all that you use it for, which means I should have gotten up earlier. That kind of action is best for really early morning, really late evening. You see that fish jump right next to my bait? Continuing the hunt at a pond. Oh, that was a big hit, dude. It missed as soon as it hit the water. Oh, dang it. It just like rolled on it. I think that was a catfish that just rolled. Just in case we need backup some sort of horrible situation occurs where I can't defer the gratification of just throwing a 5.6 inch prey bait. Just in case, bring in other baits. Main objective though, musky on the gnarly chub. That's right, musky. Getting a little thick down here. That's right. Getting the pliers ready prematurely. No better way to jinx it. Whoa! Blew up right at the kayak. I was about to cast. Where do you think you're going? It's official, fellas. Large mouth like gnarly chubs. Oh, that went barb deep into my backpack. Okay, I gotta let this guy go. That is good news. We caught this guy really quick. Large mouth, like gnarly chubs. It's official, be free. This happens more than it doesn't when you're fishing. That's the fact. You catch something real quick when you get to a spot and then you do not catch anything after that. That happens a lot, in my experience. It happens so much, it makes me wonder if I'm doing something. If there's a pattern of human behavior that you do at the beginning when you start fishing, maybe you are actually giving more 
energy and attention and then over time you just get sloppy and you don't even know. Over eight hours of fishing later, we've only chipped one tooth. That worked pretty good. The tupelo teeth carved out of wood. When you do that rigid lateral line technique, it leaves the clear coat on that ridge susceptible to chipping a lot more than the rest of the body. But I just like that design so much. I just need more clear coats, I think. Maybe it doesn't need to be so protrudy. Who knows? Once I start doing something like that, it's really hard for me to stop. So we'll see if that just made me stop. I don't know. So we have two in the gnarly series. The old gnarly gill with the big bite mark and the crazy alien predator face, essentially. And the bit more tubelier, more toothier, even more open mouthier, gnarly chub, has been added to the... That was the chair, I didn't fart. Is another fantastic addition. Yeah, and at that pond, that catfish that just did some gymnastics on the gnarly chub and just didn't get hooked up, I don't know. That would have made this video. And I'd fish with this bait for another eight hours if I could, but I don't have time. If that didn't happen in fishing, fishing would be predictably less entertaining, you know? So I accept the misfortune that that was. No, pr I'm fine. Don't worry about me, guys. We gotta keep this show rolling, though. On to the next bait. There's not gonna be much method to this. Perpendicular. That looks like a desperate chub. This thing's not straight. It's getting a little thick down here. I can barely not gag. Whoa! 